These peak models published in surface and interface analysis were used to analyze a surface that consisted of reduced graphene oxide and graphene oxide in different proportions. And the success of this analysis depended on using line shapes that were sympathetic to the physics and chemistry of the sample and also that constraints were used to ensure that these peak models when fitted to data using nonlinear least squares were capable of returning physically sensible results. So in this video what I'm going to do is demonstrate the importance of line shapes and how if we don't fully understand what these line shapes ought to be that constraints are an important part of extracting useful information from XPS data by fitting curves to data with nonlinear least squares. If nonlinear least squares is the technique of choice when analyzing XPS data then it's probably a good idea to understand the influence of these parameter constraints on a nonlinear least squares problem. So what I've done here is I've created a spectrum. When I say I've created a spectrum, what I've done is I've taken a nitrogen one S peak from nylon. And so I have a single peak that I know ought to be of a, a given shape. And the background's relatively flat, so that makes the background quite easy to model. And I've constructed by shifting and scaling this nylon peak a spectral shape which I can now analyze using nonlinear least squares. Since I've constructed this spectrum I know that I've used three peaks so when I create a background and add to this background a set of components then I know I need three components and this is a big advantage when creating a peak model because knowing the number of components certainly helps a lot when we try to define the problem that we would like to fit using nonlinear least squares. I'm going to start off with one peak which I've positioned with a line shape that is a GL40. This is a pseudo Voigt function that is commonly used and it represents the product of a Gaussian and a Lorentzian and the idea is that we obtain a bell-shaped curve which will represent photoemission signal from one of the chemical states. I'm going to copy this one. So I've got it selected, copy and paste. That gives me a second peak with the same line shape. And I'll use the cursor to move the peak and adjust the position. I'll say paste again. So I've got a third peak and I'll place the peaks pretty much in the positions that I have created for these three photo emission lines that are different offsets and scales for this nitrogen 1s from nylon. So if I now say fit components I end up with a peak model that fits the data. We have a residual which is close to what we might expect for pulse counted data, 1.5, so this is entirely consistent with pulse counted data, the residual looks reasonably uniform, so we could be quite happy with the peak model that we see here. However, I know the relative proportions of the three peaks, and the answer that is being delivered by nonlinear least squares is not the same as the proportions that I used to create these data. Let me just add some annotation so I can see the proportions. So I'm going to use a formula and take it from the active tile. It'll use the strings that are the tag strings here so I need to adjust those after I've created my annotation. We see here the annotation and I'll set that as A, B and the tag string as C for each one of these components. Let me just adjust the font so it's a little bigger. So I select, change the font size, let's make it 28 and say apply. So here we have the annotation that shows us the relationships between the peaks in terms of ratios. I've currently got this as A, so I'm going to say A star 2. So this means that the area of A will be 
factored up by two and then the comparison with these other peaks will be easier to make because I created the peak in position A it ought to be twice the size of the peak in position C and if we look at the result here we can see that this is not the case so nonlinear least squares simply adding a set of components with a, a commonly used line shape when we use it to fit these data we do not get the result that I'm expecting however if I now link all these full width half maxima to one of these components so instead of allowing the full width half maximum for each one of these components to vary I'm going to say link all and it introduces parameter constraints these are relational parameter constraints that are going to force the full width half maximum for each one of these peaks to be the same and so when I optimize I end up with a new peak model the components have moved in position they've changed in relative intensity and they all have the same full width half maximum and I know these have the full width half maximum because I used a single peak hence this is a very strong constraint that I'm applying to these that matches my understanding of these data and as a result I get a new fit where A is nearly twice the size of C and B is five times the size of C and this is much closer to what I'm expecting from fitting these data with a peak model what has been done in, in the course of this exercise is to demonstrate that a set of components with a commonly used line shape if fitted to data without any form of constraints produces a result which is incorrect whereas a very simple constraint which is that all these components have the same forward half maximum has produced a result that is far closer to what we expect for these data so the importance of constraints is quite clear but one should emphasize that the reason we can use these constraints in this form is because we know because of how these data were constructed that all these components have the same width now that's not necessarily the case for all photo emission peaks for example a graphitic peak is very narrow compared to a double bond carbon oxygen type peak so we have to be careful about introducing constraints make sure it makes sense in a physical sense but they are an important part of fitting using nonlinear least squares and the reason for its half maximum is important is because the distribution over the energies for a given photo emission line represented by a component changes significantly if we allow the forward half maximum to be broader than we'd expect or narrower than we expect so forward half maxima are an important constraint when we want to obtain a good reliable result from nonlinear least squares it's not the only constraint but it certainly is one of the more important ones just to emphasize the importance of constraints that a linear least squares applied to these data if we know the three spectral shapes that were used to calculate these data if we apply linear least squares to these data we ought to get a perfect solution and the reason that we get a perfect solution is because we have effectively fixed the position of the peaks and we've fixed the full width half maximum of the peaks and the data itself is precisely the shape of the underlying peaks within these data so I can do this calculation if I select the three component spectra that we use to calculate the spectrum we see here when I overlay these you can see that we have three spectra they are offset in precisely the amount that's required to fit the data the width of these components are precise and they match the data and the only thing that will happen is that the least squares will scale each one of these components so that the components when summed together will provide an envelope that fits the data so I can do this using an option on the spectrum processing dialog window and it's on the PCA property page and it says generate spectra and what this option does is it takes the data that is displayed in the active tile uses these data as the basis 
functions that will be used to calculate a linear least square scaling and it will apply to the spectrum that I've selected and this is the spectrum that we did the peak fit on so if I now do the calculation using the generate spectra button I've got three overlaid in the active tile one will be the target generate spectra it tells me that there's one target and three basis spectra then I say yes and what results is a new VAMAS file that contains the data the least square solution that is based on summing these three components here so when I overlay these in the active tile I can now remove the residual because that's not being used and we can see that we have three spectra that are the basis functions that are now scaled to produce an envelope that matches the data perfectly and I can see that this is matching it perfectly because I've overlaid this red one and this green one the raw data and the least squares data and we end up with only the red one visible if I offset these data you can see there's a green one also so let me just cycle through the different offsets and then back and you can see that we really have an incredibly good fit to the data because least squares has calculated a unique solution because the components are constrained in width they're constrained in position and the only thing that has been calculated is the area so what we have in a least squares calculation are the perfect set of constraints to allow us to calculate the right proportion of 1 to 5 to 2 for these particular forms of the data so linear least squares demonstrates that with perfect constraints meaning perfect position perfect full width half maximum and perfect line shape that we do get a perfect answer the case of nonlinear least squares is limited by the fact that we often use line shapes that are not perfect and because these are not perfect we have to introduce constraints and certain constraints that limit the shapes of these line shapes in terms of width of peaks and the distribution of signal over energy if we constrain these types of changes then we get better results in conclusion if we don't have perfect line shapes then we must have constraints to make a solution that is physically meaningful